five five we're dealing with more formulas <clears throat> you'll be able to find them on the formula sheet that your teacher gave you double angle formulas so when you look at them you're you're multiplying the same angle by two so a double angle uh, 20 is two times 10 something like that or then when you look at the cosine double angle formulas, notice that it's the cosine squared minus sine squared is the first one. But if you do Pythagorean identity substitutions, you can end up with two cosine squared minus one or one minus two sine squared, depending on which substitution you do. So let's jump into one. They tell me that I'm supposed to work in 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, so that's down here in the fourth quadrant. So I draw my triangle like we've been doing, and they tell me the cosine is 5 over 13, so adjacent over hypotenuse. If you do the Pythagorean theorem, 13 squared is 169, 5 squared is 25, 169 minus 25 is 144, so the square root of 144 is 12. However, that's going in a downward direction, so we have to make it negative. Now we'll do the double angle for tangent. So you do 2 times the tangent. Tangent would be negative 12 over 4. Five, so let me finish writing this. I guess I should say thetas. So <clears throat> two times negative twelve over five, all over one minus opposite negative twelve over adjacent five squared. So basically now it's just a matter of arithmetic. You can go to a calculator if you wanted to. You put this over 1, so that would be negative 24 over 5 if you multiply across the top and the bottom. And down here we have 1 minus 144 over 25. So 144 over 25, you could think of this as 25 over 25. And so when you subtract, you end up with negative 24 over 5 on top. And then 25 minus 144 is negative 119. So you have negative 119 over common denominator 25. You have negative 24 over 5 times 25 over negative 119. You get rid of 1 there. So it looks like I'm getting negative 120 over negative 119, which would be positive 120 over 119. But again, we could go to the calculator and do all the same work and see if we get the same answer. So on top, we had negative 24 being divided by 5. And then we're dividing by, we had 1 minus 144 divided by 25. And hit enter. I uh, use my keyboard. That's when I use my keyboard. When I wanted the negative, I accidentally put in a subtraction. So I want negative there. So I get that. And if I hit math, enter, enter, I get my 120 over 119.
All right, so now we go back to example two. You're going to kind of set everything up the same way. Um, go ahead and try the sine, the cosine, and the tangent double angles. Just follow the patterns that are in the uh, box of formulas up above. Come back and check your answer in a little bit. So pause the video now. All right, so the first one, when you do the double angle of two tangent, you write down two sine of theta, cosine of theta. So if you did this in the first quadrant, here's your triangle. The sine is 3 fifths. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse 4 fifths. And remember, you might want to put this over 1. It does not multiply to everything. It just goes to the top. So 2 times 3 times 4 is 24. Get that. Now, cosine, you can choose which formula you want, but it's probably just as easy to do cosine squared minus sine squared. So you write down cosine, square it, sine, square it. You get these two. And if you do that work, you get 7 over 20 fifths. Now, I just showed you how to do a tangent, and that's fine. You can do the tangent formula, but I would just take, since tangent, the double angle, oh, they didn't write it in here. They actually went through the formula again. I would, for tangent, uh, let's see what we had. We had sine was 24 over 25. All right, so sine was 24 over 25 and cosine was 7 over 25. And when you do the double angle for tangent, it's sine over cosine, which would be 24 over 25 times the reciprocal, 25 over 7. The 25s go away, and I end up with 24 over 7. So we could have done it that way also. Just put your sine answer over your cosine answer. And you'll notice they went through the work of the formula, which isn't bad. Um, and they ended up with this. All right, so uh, this one we're solving, so we're kind of going back to what we did in 5.3. And I can just do 2 cosine of x plus. Now, I want to switch this out, so I'm going to call this 2 sine x cosine x using one of the double angles from the front page. And so now I notice that both terms have a cosine. They each have a 2. So let's go ahead and pull a 2 cosine of x out. That leaves behind 1. So I pulled the 2 out of there and the cosine. So it leaves behind 1. I pulled the 2 and the cosine there. It leaves behind just sine of x. So now you can set each one of these equal to 0. So over here, if you divide by 2, you're asking the question, when is cosine 0? And over here, you subtract 1, and you're answering the question, when is sine of x equal to negative 1? Well, cosine is 0 at the top, which would be 90 degrees, and 270 degrees, the bottom. And sine of x is negative 1 at 270 degrees. So... 90 and 270. You certainly can be writing pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. All right, so if you remember on this next one, um, we're kind of looking like we're stuck because it's cosines. I have all cosines, which is good, but I can't get them factored at this point, but if you remember that the cosine of 2x, looking at the double angle formulas, um, another way to write it would be 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. So if you look at the formula sheet, I can 
look at that substitution. So that means I can take this one and now do 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. I didn't do anything to this cosine. And so now it kind of looks like a quadratic, so I'm going to do 2 cosine squared of x here plus a cosine of x minus 1. And what that allows me to do now is factor it into 2 cosine of x and a cosine of x. I can do a 1 and a 1. So if I make this positive and this negative, I'll have my factoring. So if you set both of these equal to 0, I can say add the 1, divide by 2. So if I add the 1 and divide by 2, I'm answering that question. And here I just have to subtract the 1, and we're answering this question. So where is cosine 1 half? That's going to happen at 60 degree angle where cosine is positive. So 60 degrees, if you look on the unit circle, 60 degrees and 300 degrees. And cosine is negative 1 at pi or 180 degrees. So again, 60, 180, 300. You can certainly do pi over 3, pi, and uh, 5 pi over 3. If you want to be in radians. So the next one is a DIY. You're going to have to get them both in terms of one variable. So you either want all sines in the problem or all cosines in the problem. See if you can get it done. Pause the video now. So this last one, so this last one on this page is just uh, verifying the trig identity. So another way to write cosecant of two theta. So I might start over here this time, uh, just because we're doing double angle. So I'm going to write that as one over sine of two theta. If you write that as 1 over sine of 2 theta, now you can do your trig identity or uh, double angle formula, and it's 2 sine of theta cosine of theta. And so what this allows me to do now is actually write it as 1 over sine of theta times 1 over 2 cosine of theta. I'm just kind of peeking, you know, right there, what's going on. And so this one right here can now be written as cosecant of theta times 1 over 2 cosine of theta. And if you put that over 1, and now when you multiply across the top, you end up with cosecant of theta all over 2 cosine of theta. All right, so half-angle formulas are given in the box. Um, the one thing we have to decide before we start each problem the one thing we have to decide is whether we're going to do a positive or a negative. And then with tangent, uh, depending on which one you do here. I would rather work with a one-half on the bottom. So depending on what angle you do, I would put, like if I'm doing the sine of 30 degrees, you know, if we're looking at 30 degrees, remember the order pair for 30 degrees is root 3 over 2, one-half. So I would rather do the sine on the bottom because it's one-half. It'll be easier for you to work with the denominator. So sine of 105, uh, we could do some of our other formulas, but we're going to do a half angle this time. So I'm going to do the sine of 210 degrees divided by 2. That's the same thing now. And so right away, I know that 210 puts me in the 
third quadrant, and sine will be negative there. So I determine from, from my angle that sine will, oops, I said that wrong. Sine of 105 puts me in the second quadrant. And so when you're in the second quadrant, sine is still positive. So we're doing the positive angle, and then we do 1 minus cosine of 210 all over 2. And if you go to cosine of 210, down here, cosine of 210 will be negative with 3 over 2. So I say 1 minus negative root 3 over 2 all over 2. And we're going to use that trick that we learned the other day. We're going to put a 2 over 2 under the radical. So now I end up with the square root of 2, double negative, so that's plus root 3 because the uh, 2 on the bottom, so when I multiply by 2 in those two places, the 2's go away. But now I have a 4 on the bottom, so when you split this up, you end up with 2 plus the square root of 3 all over the square root of 4, and that's part of the reason why we did this 2 back here, is to create the square root of 4. And so my final answer is 2 plus root 3 under that radical, and the square root of 4 is 2 on the bottom. So let's go ahead and double check our answer. So we go to the calculator, make sure we're in degree mode. And I can do the sine of 110. I get that. And now if I do the square root, 2 plus, and again, the square root of 3, hit enter, divide by 2, and now something is off. Let's see what I did. I did the sine of 110. I'm supposed to do the sine of 105, and now the decimals are the same. All right, so the cosine 165, I could do the cosine of 330 over 2. That's the same thing as 165. Now, the cosine of 165 puts me in the second quadrant where cosine is negative. So my answer will be negative. And when you do the cosine formulas, you're doing 1 plus the cosine of the new angle. I have 1 plus, and again, 330 cosine would be positive root 3 over 2, all over 2. We can do our little trick there. And you end up with 2 plus root 3 on top, all over the square root of 4. And I get 2 plus root 3 over 2. And just looking back at the problem, I had identified it as negative, so we got to keep the negative out in front. And so that's our final answer. You can check it with, with your calculator.